In this season that we're in right now, there's going to be so much more that happens in the news. There's going to be so much that we're going to see, but you have to guard your heart for everything we do flows from it. You have to guard your heart because whatever you set your heart upon, you're worshiping. And this is not the time to worship offense. It's not the time to worship moments, but that we are setting our hearts before the Lord and so that we stay sensitive to Him in these times. All week we have been talking about the Lord's Prayer, unpacking all that that has. And I think we could exhaust all the airwaves that exist with just this one, path, this one little phrase, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And I don't know about you girls, but when I wake up in the morning, my forgiveness button has to be switched on. It's like, who woke me up? <laughs> <laughs> and I find so much of, of the forgiveness thing is so much of the offense thing. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think if we lived a life that we weren't just so offended by everything, it would, it would do us a lot of good. And to have God's forgiveness, there's nothing we can do to deserve it. We can never be good enough for God's grace for his forgiveness that he actually came down and shed his blood for my sin. Yeah. And so I think if we just walk in that spirit of love, that spirit of being unoffendable <laughs> and then walking in forgiveness, that helps change the world. That helps bring his kingdom here. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think the truth is that, you know, he says it as well because he wants us to be free. You know what I mean? He wants us to be truly free. And what I find is that when I haven't forgiven someone, when I'm holding on to an offense, mm -hmm. I think that I'm really sticking it to that person that did something to me. Meanwhile, right. they don't have any <laughs> clue that I'm still offended. Mm -hmm. And the person that it's right. affecting is oh, me. Nice. The person that actually is all bound up inside is me. Yeah. So holding on to that offense is not even hurting the person as much that might have been the offender, but it's actually hurting me. It's keeping me from being free. It's keeping me from being able to be just light even yeah. in, in my attitude and in my heart because I've got a heavy heart. Um, and the truth is, you know, everyone's personality is a little bit different. And forgiveness has never been, it's not a, one of the things I struggle with the most because <laughs> I'm usually the person that's the offender. <laughs> so I'm usually the one that's causing the offense and I have no clue. And I'm going through my day, doing my thing, having no idea why this person's upset at me. <laughs> and um, and my husband will tell you, like, actually, no, I'm pretty quick to forgive. Yeah. That's not my struggle. I have plenty of other struggles. But I think that for me, I'm usually the one that's busy offending somebody and not even realizing it. <laughs> yeah. But I think that sometimes we don't realize that we haven't let go of an offense because we think, oh, no, no, no. But we don't mm -hmm. realize it's actually affecting the way we view that person. Yeah. It's affecting the way we talk, not even to that person, but about that person. We about think we're being person? we think we're yeah. being so sneaky yeah. when we're asking right. other people yeah. to pray for them because of their struggle. That right. we, feel like <laughs> <laughs> we need to share with everybody. And it's our backhanded way of gossiping about that person. Right. And under the guise of something that yeah. sounds really holy, but it's not. And so, you know, I don't know, but once you realize and you remember what it's like to be forgiven mm -hmm. from the Lord, yes, but oh, also man. even from yeah. somebody that you've yeah. offended, mm -hmm. there's almost nothing more beautiful than when you realize that you've actually really hurt a person and you don't deserve to be forgiven and they forgive you anyway. Mm -hmm. That is such a beautiful, yeah. beautiful light feeling inside that um, I think that, that remembering that helps me to kind of keep the slate clean. <laughs> you know, it's so hard for me yeah. in 2021, it's letting the Lord lead me through mm. humility to forgiveness. And, you know, yes, we're gonna be, try to be unoffendable, but when we think about what's happening on our nation's stage right now, mm. it's a lot of offenses that have been built up 
that have been stacked on top of one another over time and um, with words and with events. And we have just had an interesting 365 plus days, right? And the reality is one of the things the Lord's been helping me with as a black woman in America with two black sons and a black husband, there are things that are offenses that really do trickle down to the everyday life. Say for instance, and I've said it before, yeah. but my husband and I have this agreement that it's not his habit to take the trash out at night because we live in a neighborhood where there aren't many people who look like us in that neighborhood. And people who look like us have been accused of stealing in my neighborhood before with no proof. So it's kind of like, buddy, just be safe. Stay inside at nighttime because in our neighborhood, people shoot first, ask questions later. And so the reality is there, there are things, there are big things that happen that are tragedies that trickle on down into everyday life. You know, I go to Starbucks and I have my infant there when my four-year-old was an infant and a man looks at my baby and says, what are you looking at, you little punk? Well, now we can talk about being unoffendable all we want to, but in that moment, <laughs> what I'm here to tell you that your girl from Memphis has to hear that I have to forgive those debts as I've been forgiven. And the crux for me is always this. And it's the Lord saying, Janice, it's about humility. Please understand that whatever can possibly offend slash hurt slash wound you has offended me more. Mm. People sinning against what you think is you is really them sinning against me because I am holy. Mm -hmm. And the chasm mm -hmm. between God and every human being is so wide that the chasm between me and somebody else who offends me in that moment is so minuscule in comparison that that's the Lord saying, listen, you forgiving them of five cents compared to me forgiving you of trillions of dollars, that's what we're looking at. And so when I say forgive, I'm not saying that what they did is not deplorable, is not painful, is not tragic, is not horrible. I'm saying that what I have to offer and what I've offered you and what you've accepted is way more magnificent. The fact that your sin against me would have kept you away from me for eternity. Mm -hmm. And I wiped the slate yeah. clean. And in light of yes. that, what I want yes. you to do is wipe the slate clean. And you're gonna need me to yeah. do it because it requires humility and yeah. that's from God. It's true. Yeah. I love in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, it's talking about perfect love. It's giving us a template or a description of what perfect love is. And sometimes I want to skip over the verse that says that love doesn't keep a record of wrong. I'm like, oh, okay, man. come on. It um, doesn't it, Lord? It, <laughs> I know, like that record of wrongs could get pretty long, right? right? Yeah. And, and when you've been married 23 years, it's really important to not keep a record of wrongs. Can I say that again? Amen. <laughs> yes. And and, I, and same you for can. me. I, I mean, I'm looking at my husband. I'm like, we couldn't be more opposite in every way. And the yeah. problem with keeping a record of wrongs, especially in a marriage, I was reading a book the other day that says, perhaps you and your spouse have been in a 10-year-long argument. And I was like kind of <laughs> laughing because it's like always the one topic that you both don't really see the same way. And then when it comes up, it becomes a little mm -hmm. bit of tension. <laughs> and then what you do is you remind them of how they handled the last time you talked about it. And then the yes. time before that and the time before that. And all of a sudden you're like, oh. and so it, then the things like you always or you never, and we've learned don't use those words when you're having a little disagreement on whatever that record of wrong is. So it's just been so funny for me um, over the years to go, if we overreact to something, Lisa Turker says, if it's if you get hysterical, it's historical. There's <laughs> been a moment in your right. life where this just <laughs> kind of got you, and now that muscle memory in your brain just keeps replaying that. That's why we get offended so easily. That's why we overreact to things. There's some unresolved stuff in there that's kept a record of wrongs. Yeah. And so I think for me, it's been so helpful to just uh, assess why, why am I, why do I get so frustrated about this one thing or why do I act in the wrong way? Yeah. And then go back to God and just say, I know you've already 
you've already taken this. You've already paid for this. You, you've set me free so I don't have to actually continue to get offended or keep this record of wrongs. And I took a moment in Scripture years ago. I was reading Hebrews, and I got to chapter 10, and something just, I was on a flight, and I was flying to something I was going to teach at, and I was just preparing. And like, in my brain, I'm just, like, kind of zoning out. And But something got me, like, really got me when I read, um, you know, like, in the Old Covenant, the priest would bring the annual sin offerings on behalf of the sins of the people every year. He said, but finally, when the right time came, Christ became that sin offering, and he was the offering once and for all. And then God said, as a new covenant, he said, he says, I will write my laws on their minds and I'll bind them on their hearts and I will never again remember their sins or their lawless acts. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, it was as if I had never ever read it in that way where God basically ultimately said, I am love. I am God. I am yeah. love. God is love. Yeah. And love means that as a new covenant, people that had, when Christ paid the price, yeah. I am now not going to look at you through the lens of the sin. Right. I'm not going to look at you and remember and keep that record of wrongs of all the things right. you've ever done. Thank and the Jesus. reason that got me so much is because I know that God still sees me in my sin today. He still sees when I overreact. He sees if I stalk someone online. He sees if I yell at the TV. <laughs> um, you know, but yet he's saying your identity now is is cleansed because of Christ's righteousness. When you confess your sin, you're cleansed. Um, and so I'm not going to, God himself is saying, I'm never going to keep a record of wrongs. I'm not going to see you and remember you that way. I'm actually going to always choose to see the righteousness of Christ on you. And so for me, I just couldn't stop crying because to me, that's that's the fullness of love that says, even in all your right. ish, like I still see the goodness in you. And I, and that's what I'm going to yeah. choose to focus on. And if we could do that for one another, go like, yeah, we might act out. We might overreact. We might do something that we have to apologize for a thousand times in our home, <laughs> in our parenting, in our right. marriages, in our relationships. In the end, we still see the goodness of God in one another. Because if we yeah. don't, then why would we have a new covenant? The new covenant seals the righteousness of Christ covering us. Yeah. And oh man, I I just I kind of had a boohoo moment on the flight. I was like, I can't believe you love us that much because I know I'm still sinning, but yet you're not seeing me and you're not keeping that record and you're not. That's not my identity. And I praise you for that. That really shifted the way I came to kind of know that fullness, that height, that depth, that breadth, that width that we talk about in Corinthians. The fullness of God's love is coming when we really see His forgiveness. That's so good. You know, my pastor, um, Pastor Terry Roberts, he has this saying that I love. And he says that offense is the venom mm -hmm. that even if the snake bit you, but you don't have to accept its venom. So there is the acknowledgement that something happened and this upset me. But in, for me to get offended, it's that now I'm accepting the venom from this bite, mm -hmm. you know? And my personal life, when I, if I, dwell on offense, then my heart is turned away from the Lord and it's now focusing on this offense. And whatever your heart is set upon, you begin to worship. And we are in such a sensitive time that the enemy, one of his top strategies right now is how can, how can I get you to get to the state of offense? Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is yeah. that we think, just like we're sharing, is that sometimes when, that, when you take in offense, you are, you are in charge. Oh, I'm gonna hold on to this, I'm in power. But that's actually the wrong thing because they are, they're little sneaky strategies of the enemy because the heart is the place that you are connected with God. The moment your heart is set aside from the affections of the Lord, anything can happen. Like I think about Solomon and it's, it's such a different story, but it's that you see Solomon's story and you see how all these riches were brought to him, you know, I mean, based on just the word of the Lord, right? And so now Solomon is great in wisdom. He's great in riches. And there were, there were moments where I thought that, Lord, why would it be the thing that you blessed him with was the thing that caused him to fall? And he said, no, go read it again. <laughs> and when I read it again, it talks about how Solomon's heart, he loved women. He loved foreign women. And then it hit me, this is not even about the women or the foreign women, it was about the heart. Mm -hmm. 
that his heart was no longer set on the things of God. His heart was set on the very thing that God told him to not do. And so the same way, forgiveness is actually the Lord giving us insight. This is what keeps your heart in the place of purity. Mm -hmm. This is what keeps you in the place of connection to me. This is what causes you to stay sensitive. And I love what you shared, Natalie, yeah. that sometimes you're the offender <laughs> and you don't even know what you did, but yeah. someone is out there and now their heart is worshiping that moment. Their heart is worshiping that offense that you had no intention of even sending their way. And so I really just hold on to the words of Jesus on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. At the end of the day, one thing the Lord taught me was that no one would ever hurt you from a place of wisdom or from a place of love. And so when a person does something, it is out of their ignorance and brokenness. It doesn't say that something didn't happen Happen, but it's to say, I'm not going to agree with a lie. I'm not going to identify you to this identity that's not even truly who you are. So I'm going to look at this moment and say, you know what? You didn't know better. And I could walk away and let it go. I'm not going to allow anything. In this season that we're in right now, there's going to be so much more that happens in the news. There's going to be so much that we're going to see. But you have to guard your heart for everything we do flows from it. You have to guard your heart because whatever you set your heart upon, you're worshiping. And this is not the time to worship offense. It's not the time to worship moments, but that we are setting our hearts before the Lord and so that we stay sensitive to Him in these times. I love that. And it reminded me of this scripture. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, yeah. humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against the other, here's what you do. It says, forgive each other. <laughs> as the Lord has yeah. forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And I think, you know, Many, many years, what I was taught is, hey, if you have an, an ought against somebody, you got to go to them. Um, and that's not realizing the weightiness of the word ought in the Greek. Like that's not, we really mean complaint. If you have a complaint against somebody, go to them. No, but the word says, if you have a complaint against somebody, forgive them. And that's the first yeah. order of business. And it's something that we have to put on as believers, it's something that we have to choose and clothe ourselves with. And um, it just reminds me that the first order of business must be forgiveness. And that's how I get to the other side of it. Do you know what? Everyone's gonna stand at the judgment seat of Christ and they're gonna give an account for what they did. Yeah. Not what their neighbor did, mm -hmm. not what somebody said to him, not what generations past did, what I did what my attitude was, and God sees your heart anyway. Yeah. There's, there's probably people I'd love to call up if I could ever find them and go, you know what I said in sixth grade? I, so I'm sorry. so sorry for that. <laughs> because, yeah, because I still remember saying that or, you know, but, um, but I, I love that it is for my heart, for my spirit, because that's what I'm accountable for. I'm accountable for my reaction, for my action, for all of that. And, like I said, I keep myself very busy just keeping, creating me a clean heart. Right. I think right? even just that idea of forgiving other people um, for they know not what they do. You said the right stuff. That when, the, when he prayed that on, on the cross, I think sometimes like even in this moment in time in our country, I find just me personally— Sometimes I feel like I'm literally getting my bowl of popcorn and I'm like, what's happening on today's episode of U.S. of A? <laughs> I'm like, just watching, like, what on earth? And I, I find, like, even in my own, like, heart and mind, I'll be like, oh, my goodness, there was a lot of normal people. They were masquerading like normal people, but there's a lot of craziness going on, right? And then I find in my own heart, like, well, why is that person being so crazy? And why is that person being so crazy? Right. And I got so convicted um, just last week when I found this like judgment coming out of my inner thoughts as I'm, you know, like what's happening on today's episode. <laughs> and then the Lord was like, you have no idea what brought that person to this spot. True, you have right? no idea yeah. where they've been hurt, where they've been crushed in spirit. Yeah. And maybe they haven't experienced my grace. And I think that if we could get back to the place of seeing other people through the grace lens, 
of Jesus Christ yeah. through that mercy lens of, oh my goodness, I have no idea. It doesn't excuse what that person's doing, right. but it gives you a heart of compassion to think, what is it that brought them to this place of hate? What is it that brought them to this place of, of such anger or, or such hurt? And it's usually because of some unforgiveness that they're carrying in their life that they haven't been able to let go of. And if we could begin to model for other people, this is what loving your enemies, oh man, it's just hard. It's really right. hard yeah. to love your enemies. It's hard to love those people when you're just like, no, I, I, I can't, Lord. Well, I can't in and of my flesh. But when you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, he does make it possible yeah. to love those that you just don't even seem to have anything in common with. Mm -hmm. And if we could begin to just look at them through that, you know, in the light of His glory and grace, I'm seeing this yeah. person. True. Then it makes it so, it doesn't make it easy, but it makes it easier and it makes it possible, yeah. you know? When you think about yeah. um, what it really, what happens to people to become so frustrated, angry, hurtful. Um, it really was tra their own trauma, their own story, their own thing. And sometimes we only see that how it affects us and we, we don't go back right. and go, well, what, like Natalie said, what is the thing that actually caused them? Where was their wound? Yeah. Where did that begin for them? And I know for me a few years ago, um, something happened and consciously, like I literally, it was very, very painful. And I remember thinking, mm -hmm. I cannot forgive this person. And I didn't want to have that posture. I didn't intend to have that posture. It was kind of out of the wound. It just kind of came out. Mm -hmm. And I sat with it for a couple weeks, a couple months. One night, I remember the Lord waking me in the middle of the night, and He said, mm -hmm. you have no right, right to withhold forgiveness from this person. And because what I learned is that when we go to bed angry or we go to bed carrying a record of wrongs, what it does is it gives the enemy a foothold. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need our whole heart. He just needs a crack in the door. <laughs> He just is like right. um, a foothold. I had to look it up. It's uh, basically a stance you can take so that you can then enter and take more ground. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think sometimes the enemy looks at people of God and just says, hey, if I can't get them to willingly sin or willingly rebel mm -hmm. or outwardly publicly be um, um, disobedient to God, what I can do is I can give them a spirit of offense. Mm -hmm. I can get, keep them justified in their pain, and I can give them lots of rationale as to why they were so hurt and the other person is to blame. And, and it was the kindness of God to kind of go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What you're doing by validating this yeah. narrative that you can't possibly have it within you to forgive. Um, how about you let me be the one who does that through you? And so I remember that night, it was been yeah. August, and I, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I felt like something kind of physically come out mm -hmm. of me. It was like just, just this emotion of lament, like sorrow that I carried something. It was a big story. It was like kind of a big relationship that was very powerful to me. And then I just confessed it. And then once I confessed it in my journal, all of a sudden I was like, well, shoot, now I'm going to need to call this person. It's not just between me and God. It's me going to them. <laughs> mm. and, and so I don't know if that's yeah. you. I don't know if that's um, someone that might be watching right now that just is saying, you know, I've held on to something. It's created a barrier or a distance here. Um, but I do want to lay that down. I, want, I, I don't want there to be yeah. any opening in my heart where the enemy can come in and try to steal and kill and destroy relationships. So if that's you, just say, what is the thing, Lord, that, that you can do through me, the way you can forgive through me, help me forgive um, in the way that only you can do because you are the perfect love that doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Yes. Jesus, we praise you and we thank you that you modeled um, in everything you did, every encounter that you had with people, Lord, even how you taught us to pray, um, that, that you are never withheld forgiveness, that even anyone that you would encounter, that you would say the first one who was without sin cast a stone, no one could do it. But you were spotless and you were blameless and you said, neither do I condemn you. Thank you. Go and sin no more. So we praise you, God, 
that you have given us a model. You have shown us what it means to not take offense, to not keep a record of wrongs, to choose to see the righteousness of Christ um, on us, that when we, when we uh, confess our sins, you cleanse us. And not only that, your Holy Spirit that you've gifted us with, that you've baptized us with, that you've given us um, as a comforter and an advocate, the Holy Spirit even convicts us in such a way that, that, that there wouldn't be no separation, no, no um, parting ways, no, no distance between us and you. So for everyone listening today, Lord, I just pray that you'd keep our hearts sprinkled clean, that you would show us the places we've withheld forgiveness from someone else, and that you would show us today how to go to that, go to you first, to confess that, and then you would help us to go to that person. Lord, heal our relationships. We trust you, we praise you for this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.